But how are we going to use interval notation to show what the domain and what the range are for each of these dudes? Now, I, I, I just made these up, okay? Um, there probably is some kind of a function that you can make to make, the, make it look like this, but that's not the point. The point is, what is the domain and what is the range? So when we look at this first line right here, you pay attention to this line right here when you're talking about the domain. This is your domain line, the x-axis, okay? Which values are included in this function. And this is what you do. You look at like like negative one. You look at negative one. Is there an answer for negative one? Yes, it's right here. Look at look at um let's see, uh what is that? One, two, three, four. Look at four right here. Is there an answer for four? Yes, it's right here. But this gets a little I don't, I don't know if this is complicated or not, but let's see, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. If I look at six, is there an answer for six? Yeah, because there's an arrow here. It means it's going to keep going. So yes, it will go through um, <coughs> x, e x equals 6. So what about x equals negative 6? Is there going to be an answer for that one? Yeah, yeah it's going to probably be about right, right, about right there with the line going through that. All we know is that there's an arrow. And if there's an arrow pointing left, that means there's going to be some more domain numbers to the left. And if there's an arrow pointing to the right, that means we're going to have more domain numbers to the right. And so this is how you would write the domain for this one. It goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. All real numbers. Negative infinity to positive infinity. What about the domain for this one? It's kind of the same uh, situation as the previous, because it has an arrow pointing to the left and an arrow pointing to the right. That means your domain is all real numbers. Always use parentheses around uh, infinity signs. Okay, but here is when things get a little more tricky, tricky, trick, trick. Because look, if I look at 2, yes, I have an answer. If I look at 1, yes, I have an answer. If I even look at whatever number that is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I look at 6 right here, this arrow is pointing down and to the right. So, yes, there will be an answer for 6 eventually. It will probably be really, really low, but there will be an answer there because the arrow is there. Some of you guys are like, yeah, but it looks like that arrow's going to start going straight down. Yes, but it will always be going to the right unless the graph tells you that there's something like this line right here. It's called an asymptote. It's like a barrier. If the graph has a barrier right there, then yes, then it will stop, but this graph doesn't. And so this line, um, it's, we're going to continue going that way for our domain. But what about this way? Can you pick a negative one? No, you cannot. Negative 1 will not work here. See, there's no line. I look up and down, there's no line there. That means we have to stop somewhere. Now, look, look at 0. That's the last, our lowest domain number that has an answer. And look, is it included? Like, can you get a solution if you plug in 0? Yes. Yes, you can. You see? Closed circle. There he is. So, we write this down. Thank you for shouting out. I love it. Okay, uh, it, zero is included. That's our lowest number, and our highest is infinite, infinity, because of the arrow that's pointing towards the right. Now look at this last one for our domain. For this one, we have um, the arrow. It's pointing up and to the left, and so it's continuing to go that way forever. That means. Um, we have negative infinity for our domain because you know it goes on forever that way. But what about the the way to the right? Uh, can I pick a one? Can I pick a one? Is that in my domain? Yes. Uh, look at it. Look at it right here. This is my one. Yes. yes, that's a one. Look, look. Here, I'll pick a red. It's easier to see. Boom! It's right there. That's your answer if you pick a one. Can I pick a one and a half? Like one point five? Yeah. There, there's the answer right there. Okay, um, what about two? Yes. Can I pick a two? Yes. Mm. No. Some of you guys are like, well, he said yes for that dot right there. Is he going to say yes for this open dot right here? No. no. But it is a boundary. This is a boundary. It stops there. So how do we write that in our, our domain? Well, we say comma two parenthesis instead of a bracket because the two is not included in the answer in the domain, but it is a boundary. All right, now let's look at range. Okay, we'll do this one first. 
Now range, we only care about up and down. For domain, we care about left and right. So right here, we're looking at this line. Whoops. Where's my... Oh, there it is. We're looking at this line right here. And because it's pointing up and pointing down, we know that's going to be all real numbers. Oh, diggity. So we go negative infinity to positive infinity. Always. You always put the smaller number first in interval notation. And even though infinity is not a number, it's a representation of the numbers that are smaller or going negative. Okay, so for my range on this one, it, like I said before, it almost looks like that this is going to taper off, that it's going to stop right there, and it's not going to rise anymore. But there's no, there's no asymptote on it. Okay, So that means this is pointing to the left, and it's going up at the same time, which means we have all real numbers again. Same with this one. It's pointing to the left and it's pointing down, so it's going to go uh, down forever. Now let's go to this one, because this is when things start changing. Remember, you always want to start with the lowest number first. Zero. Okay, the lowest number is not zero for this line right here. This line right here. What's the lowest number? Well, let's see. We're going down, and I'm seeing my graph. It's going down also. And so, what's going to be the smallest number in our range? Negative, negative infinity, because there's arrows there. So, you have negative infinity. All right. What's going to be our highest number? So, I'm going up my, my, my range line right here. And it stops at that dot, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, we put a 4 right there. Is it an open or closed circle? Or bracket. I should say bracket or parenthesis. You guys would be like, bracket. Okay. My range for this one. This one's interesting. Um, what's my lowest number here? What's the lowest point on this graph? Look at it. Think. Think. Ah. Oh. Did you say six and a half? Yeah, negative six. You mean negative. You negative, right? Yeah. It's this right here. That's your lowest point on the graph. And so where is that? Well, let's see. That is about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, no, it's about 5, right? That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, 5 and a half. Yeah, it's because you can't count like I can with the pen, so. Okay, so the smallest number is negative 5 and a half. We're just approximating it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just showing me that you understand what's going on. And that one is a bracket because the line is there. It's not an open dot. Okay, now what's the highest? Well, this, this right here looks like a high point. But wait a second. We have an arrow. The arrow is pointing up. So that's uh, what? Infinity. 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 Yeah, my son loves that movie. What movie? The movie that says Infinity and Beyond. Okay, so the second question I want to look at, we're not going to go any farther. We'll finish the other ones tomorrow. Which of these graphs are functions? Now, you guys remember the definition of functions from a previous lesson, hopefully. Uh, let me press pause and ask you guys. So, when every domain number has exactly one range, that will define a function. So, look at these graphs. You guys don't have the rule for each of these functions, or I should say functions with quotations around them. Um, look at this one, right here. This number right here. Now, let's just do negative 2. So, at negative 2... If x was my negative 2, what's my y? Well, whatever that number is, it crosses it once. <gasps> oh, no. There's another one right here. How many range numbers does a negative 2 have? It has 2, which is not okay. This would be probably, I don't know, uh, 0.3. I don't know, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And the other one's going to be about 3.7. No, 3.5. Yeah. 3.5. It doesn't matter to be exact. It, the point is, it, this negative 2 has two range numbers mapped to it, so it is not a function. So we can write no over that one. Are you a function? No, you are not. <laughs> Sorry, we have, we have to be very assertive in here. Okay, look at this function right here. Look, it has a fancy little squiggly right here. Is, um, is there a, is every domain number have exactly one? From what we can see, yes. So is this a function? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, look at this last one. This one's kind of weird. I, I see your question, Natalie. I'll get to you in a sec. Okay. Is this one a function? Yes. 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 Okay, simply put, these numbers right here are just not in the domain. They're not in the domain because there's no answer for them. But every number that does have an answer only has one, right? Mm -hmm. So is it a function? Yes. Okay. Now there's something for this called the vertical line test. I didn't want to say it because I want you guys to look at it in a different way. Like why does the vertical line test work? And that's why. That's why vertical line test works.